Hello everybody, happy Friday, happy Science Fair Friday that is. Uh, we feel a little warmer, uh, we've passed uh, spring it feels like, it's uh, summer feeling. So we're gonna start talking about some summer things and what's better than summer than marine science. So we have a treat uh, for you today. We have Dr. Laura, she's gonna be doing something with uh, marine science. So we're gonna check it out, hope you enjoy it. And as always, follow us at 4 h Okaloosa on uh, Twitter and also follow or subscribe to our YouTube channel, 4-H Okaloosa. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Laura, Marine Science Agent for Okaloosa County. Today, I'm joining you for 4-H Science Fair Friday. Today, we're gonna talk about our love for Limulus. Do you know what Limulus is? Limulus is the scientific name for the horseshoe crab. This prehistoric looking fella was in the oceans before the dinosaurs and during the dinosaurs and exists today. Can you imagine? A stegosaurus might have walked up to the ocean and met one of these little guys on the beach. They're very pre prehistoric looking. You can see underneath here. Their underside gives us a few clues though. These animals, although they're called a horseshoe crab, are all actually more closely related to spiders and scorpions. That's right, they're arthropods. And you can tell this with a few of the characteristics. They have a hard exoskeleton or a shell. They have a segmented body right here, this part that moves. And they have jointed legs on the bottom here, surrounding their mouth. Don't those kind of look like scorpion? or spider legs. They do have a sharp tail, but they don't sting or bite. They use this for navigation, and also they use it to flip themselves back over when they get turned on their backs by the waves. So they're a very interesting little animal. This right here is actually the molt, or the shedded skeleton of a horseshoe crab. It is not a live horseshoe crab. Um, this is the to grow, these horseshoe crabs have to molt about two times a year for the first 10 years of their life before they become an adult. But then once they're an adult, they stop uh, molting. And so you can find these sometimes on the beach. It looks like it's the whole animal, but it's actually just the molt. Most of the year they can be found living in deep water and they just swim along the bottom like this using their tails for navigation. They eat all kinds of mollusks, different clams and snails. They like to eat shrimp and also worms that they find uh, in the sand. The most famous thing about a horseshoe crab though is that it's very important to humans. It actually has blue blood and the blood is famous because it contains a substance that we humans use in order to determine if our medical equipment is sterile. And so these crabs are collected by scientists and their blood is drawn from them and then they're returned to the wild. And then they sell horseshoe crab blood for $15,000 a quart. Can you imagine? That makes these guys very, very important to humans. They're also important to other animals. Twice a year during the full moon in the spring and the fall, they swim to shore where they mate and lay their eggs in the sand. And those eggs are a very important food item for birds, turtles, and fish. So they're important to their animal communities as well. Unfortunately, like a lot of our marine life, their habitat is getting destroyed because of human construction and pollution. And so Florida Sea Grant agents have started a program called the Florida Horseshoe Watch Program. And we do this, we train citizen scientists to go out there during the full moon, capture these and tag them so we can follow them and learn more about them. We also train the scientists to educate others and to help preserve the habitat where these live so that we can continue to have healthy uh, horseshoe crab populations throughout the state of Florida. So I have a challenge for you today though. I like to end with a challenge. I want you to do some citizen science research of your own and I want you to investigate online 
and find out how many eyes does a horseshoe crab have and put it in the comments below and we'll see who's the first to get the correct answer. There's some other projects that you can find online. Um, if you're into origami, I made this little origami horseshoe crab. I am not very good at origami, but it's kind of fun. Uh, I'll put the instructions, a link to the instructions online. So I uh, enjoyed doing that. And there's also a wonderful book out there you can get from your library called Crab Moon by Ruth Horowitz. And I'll put a link to that on Amazon as well.